JPA Advanced. So here we are going to learn some advanced topics of uh, JPA. By the way, we are basically covering JPA 1.0, uh, which was introduced as part of the Java EE 5. And then, of course, there are Java EE 6 and Java EE 7. And uh, so uh, in May, uh, we have another code camp uh, in, in which we are going to cover Java EE 6 and Java EE 7. So we are going to cover newly introduced features of JPA in, uh, in that code camp. Okay? So here, uh, we are basically talking about the features introduced in Java EE 5. Okay, so here we are going to talk about embeddable objects, secondary tables, and composite primary keys. Yeah, we have an example in our previous uh, the presentation on compound keys or composite key. Okay, and uh, fetch mode. We already know the concept of fetch mode and event listener, entity listeners. Okay, so let's talk about embeddable object. So embeddable object is stored as intrinsic part of an owning entity. So embeddable object is not an entity. So it doesn't have its own identity. Okay. So all the fields in the embeddable object will be mapped to the same database table of the parent that owns that entity. Okay. Now in order to embed embeddable object, okay, uh, you are going to use at embedded annotation. And uh, for embeddable object, you're going to use embeddable annotation. So let's see an example. So in this example, we have a customer which is in fact embedding, meaning it's a parent class. Now it wants to include the fields of customer info uh, class. Okay, so you can see customer info is not its own entity. Okay, so it doesn't have entity annotation. But what we want to do is we want to include all the fields of this customer class into uh, this uh, customer entity. So in this case, uh, this customer info should be annotated with embeddable. And then uh, in the embedding, in this case, customer class, you are going to uh, use at embedded annotation. OK, so the table that gets generated will be customer table, but it will include all the fields. So ID is actually from the customer and all these fields is going to be all these fields from customer info embeddable uh, class will be in the same table of customer name credit photo. Okay, so this is embeddable. All right, so let's do exercise one. So let's take a look at the uh, lab documentation. So when you run the application, uh, basically what you're going to see is a single table called my own employee table. So these city, street, and state, uh, that is actually coming from address uh, embeddable uh, class. Okay? So if you take a look at the code, here uh, the parent class of employee will have this embeddable class of address using at embedded annotation. Okay? And uh, then uh, in address class, uh, it does have embeddable annotation. Okay, and uh, main code, you know, basically we created uh, with address. So basically, uh, these are the values for the employee, but uh, you also actually provide the address object. Okay, because the address is the Java uh, class, you have to create an object of it, uh, and uh, then you're going to set it to uh, to the uh, employee. Okay, and in terms of persistence, uh, the only class that you specify is employee. Okay, because an embeddable class does not have to be here because it's not an entity class. Okay, all right. So I'll give you guys about four minutes to try this exercise. Uh, the next topic is uh, secondary tables. So JPA allows multiple tables to be assigned to a single class. Okay, and uh, so in this case, you can use secondary table and secondary tables annotation if you in fact have a multiple tables. Uh, this is useful when you happen to have existing tables and then you want to map those tables into a single entity class. Okay, so this is how you are going to use uh, secondary tables annotation. So here, uh, for employee class, 
uh, it does have a bunch of uh, fields, okay? And uh, some of those fields are coming from uh, different tables. So here we have secondary tables of salary and uh, secondary table called whatever. And this salary field is coming from a uh, salary table. Okay, so uh, uh, it's this nice way to uh, to accommodate existing uh, database table structures. All right, so exercise two. So let's take a look at uh, lab documentation. So in this case, uh, we have uh, the uh, my own employee table, and then we have salary table. And uh, we'd like to combine these two tables to a single entity class. Okay, so here uh, we are going to use uh, the. Uh, is, this is exactly the same uh, code you have seen uh, in the slide. Okay, so basically the salary is coming from salary table, and uh, we have a table which uh, we probably don't use it for now. Okay, all right. So that is pretty straightforward. So I'll give you uh, five minutes to, to uh, try the exercise. Next topic is composite primary keys. So uh, we have already had some exposure to this in previous examples. So composite primary key is that uh, you know entity can have an identifier uh, that is composed of multiple fields. Uh, so in this case, the primary key of the table is made of multiple columns. So this primary key class uh, needs to be defined, uh, and then of course that has to be serializable type. Okay, and uh, you can actually create this composite primary key in two different ways. One is using embeddable, and the other one is using ID class. Okay, so option one is embeddable class is annotated with embeddable. That's something we have seen already. Okay, and then that is the one that you can use, uh, that you can uh, as a primary key. And in order to use embeddable uh, class as a primary key class, and then you have to actually use at embeddable at embedded ID. Okay, so that's option one. Option two is using ID class. Okay, so let's take a look at each of these options uh, in a bit more detail. So this is a case that you are going to use embeddable class as embeddable, uh, you know, as a primary key class. Okay. So assuming employee ID is embeddable type, okay, and then you are going to use embeddable ID uh, like this, and uh, then the uh, the uh, the uh, 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 embeddable uh, employee ID class will be used as a composite uh, primary key class. This is one option. Okay, and the second option is something that we are going to try in the hands-on lab. So let's take a look at the, the lab exercises. So I'm going to just use, oops. Oh, the best. So composite case. So the first one is using embeddable class and embedded, in, embedded ID annotation, and this one is using ID class. So here, uh, when you run the application, uh, you know the uh, uh, this is a employee table. So in this case, uh, the uh, if you take a look at the uh, the code, uh, employee ID. Okay, so employee ID is let's take a look at employee ID. It has department and state. Okay, so and you know this is actually embeddable class which we have uh, learned before. Okay, so the combination of department and state. Uh, field will be used as a primary key. Okay, so here we use the embedded ID annotation to indicate that we are using employee ID as a composite primary key. So if you go back here, basically department and state, the combination of these two will be used as a primary key. Okay. All right. So that is the case where we are using embeddable and embedded ID uh, the annotation. The next one is uh, using ID class. Okay, so same deal. Okay, uh, the uh, here we are going to have. Uh, yeah, so this is an example we have seen before. So here we are going to use ID class annotation with employee ID class. Okay, and uh, then we are going to specify the fields of this employee ID class with the ID ID. Okay, so following two fields are used as composite, uh, the uh, composite, uh, composite uh, primary key, I should say. Okay, all right. So uh, the uh, uh, that is uh, this is employee ID. You know, this is not embeddable class in this case. 
right? So we just happen to have uh, the uh, department and department and state, and we want to use them. So you know, this is the case that when you already have the employee ID, which is not embeddable class, and that's the time that you can use ID class annotation. Okay. All right. So I'm going to give you uh, five minutes to try this exercise. Next topic is fetch mode, and uh, fetch mode concept has been talked about already several times. Uh, the uh, in, during the Hibernate and other session, other JPA sessions, uh, JPA sessions. I don't think we have talked about it that much. Okay, so uh, fetch mode could be either eager mode or lazy mode. Legal, eager mode is immediate, and lazy mode is low data only when it is accessed. Okay, so when needed, meaning your application is accessing that associated collection, that's the time it's going to fetch it. Uh, for one-to-one -one relationship, eager is the default. Okay, uh, however, for uh, one-to-many and many-to-many -many relationship, lazy is the default, and that makes sense, right? Uh, lazy fetch mode benefits large objects and relationship with the deep hierarchies. So used when field or relationship not accessed immediately. So uh, uh, if you happen to have a pretty large number of collections associated with an en entity, uh, you might want to actually use uh, lazy so that it doesn't get loaded uh, the, uh, the immediately. Okay, so let's take a look at the exercise four. So. Uh, uh, these are again the concepts that we have explored several times, so nothing really uh, surprising, I hope, to you guys. So the first one is eager. So at this time, we are going to download uh, the associated uh, collections right away, and this one is lazy. So in the fetch mode eager, you can see uh, we are actually performing uh, the select operations uh, right away. So this is for manufacturer, and this is for uh, product ID information. And uh, so, if you take a look at the code, we have uh, the uh, a manufacturer. Uh, the uh, uh, we have a manufacturer, and uh, this guy has one too many relationship with uh, product. Okay, so uh, remember this morning we have a one too many relationship covered, right? So um, manufacturer has a collection of product. Okay, so uh, manufacturer and product has one too many relationship. And here we are setting the fetch mode to fetch fetch type eager, okay. And uh, so that is basically the uh, what you are going to observe. Now, in this case, uh, we are doing a lazy mode, okay. So you can see uh, it's not, you know the, it's actually getting a manufacturer, but it's it doesn't get any it doesn't actually load the product, okay, because we set it in. Uh, lazy mode. So that is in fact the default. Okay. So you don't have to set this way, but uh, for the sake of this exercise, we are explicitly setting uh, the lazy. Okay. Uh, so you know, in this application, you are not accessing that collect. You are not accessing that uh, product. Okay. But if you try to access the product, that's the time it will try to access it. Okay. So again, this is you know something that we have covered extensively in joint fetch in Hibernate, right? So the same concept. Okay. All right. So I'm going to give you guys a few minutes to try this exercise. Okay. So this is the last topic of this presentation: entity li listeners. So listeners, you can think of them as callback methods that are called at various stages of entity lifecycle. Okay, and uh, so you can have these callback methods uh, inside the entity class, or you can have them in a separate uh, listener class. So annotations you can use include uh, pre-persist and post-persist, meaning before things get persisted, you want to get uh, some uh, callback method to be invoked. And post-persist means that after things persisted, you want to have uh, your callback method to be invoked. Same thing with the remove and update and the post load. Okay, so this is an example uh, where we are using entity listeners, uh, the uh, the annotation indicating uh, com ECMA alert monitor class. Okay, and uh, so we are going to see uh, alert monitor class and uh, uh, the yeah. So this is the case. 
Yeah, so it, this is an example where you could have uh, the, the callback methods in a separate class, uh, like alert monitor class, which you are going to see later on, or you could have inside your uh, entity class. So this is an example where you are uh, you have uh, these callback methods, uh, listener methods, right inside the uh, entity methods, like a pre persist. So you want to call this validate create method before you persist. So basically, before you persist, you want to make sure things are correct. You know, for example, uh, if you are trying to create uh, the savings account or checking account, you want to make sure you know the uh, it meets the minimum balance. Okay, otherwise it will cause an exception. Uh, post load is, uh, you know, once it's loaded, you want to uh, set a particular flag whether this account in this case is preferred customer or not, so that you are going to uh, handle preferred customer differently from regular customer and things like that. So these are examples where you have callback methods inside the entity class. However, you can also have these uh, callback methods in a separate class, in this case, alert monitor. In that case, that alert monitor class has to be uh, specified using uh, entity listeners uh, annotation like this. Okay? So this one, we are going to uh, have this callback method to be invoked uh, after uh, the, uh, the uh, persist. Okay? So that is uh, exercise five. So let's uh, take a look at the exercise five. So we have a very simple program, a JP advanced uh, J JP advanced listener. So you can see alert monitor class validate create. Uh, gets called and then we have uh, employee entity class you know we are calling this guy so what we do in this case is just kind of displaying the fact that uh, uh, some callback method gets invoked that's all okay so if you take a look at the code uh, we have alert monitor class okay and uh, then we have our own listener so these are exactly the same code we have seen in the slide okay so we are basically just displaying this message okay and then we have uh, alert monitor class. Again, we have uh, this uh, uh, printout message to get uh, displayed. Uh, after, yeah, validate create. So uh, you know the uh, we are basically pre persist before pre persist. We want to display this message. Okay, uh, pretty straightforward. So I'll give you five minutes to try this exercise. 